Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to thank each of you for joining with us for Saturday's Daily Bible Study. Coming from Charlene's Outreach Ministries, we have a great and powerful lesson for today. Draw near to God. Draw near to God. Amen. The full assurance of faith in drawing near to God. Now, our lesson is coming from Hebrews, the 10th chapter. The 19th verse through the 25th. Hey Amen. We have a great and wonderful lesson. But before we get started, I want to ask if anything and say it touches your heart, soul, or spirit. Or you have any questions or comments, please feel free to jot them at the bottom of the screen and I will get to them as soon as possible. Also, if you would subscribe to my channel and join with us as we gather together to study and meditate on the word of the Lord. Hey Amen. <clears throat> we're going to get ready to move into our lesson, but first we're going to have prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in no temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Dear God in heaven, we thank you, Father. We thank you for all the many blessings that you bestow upon us. We thank you for making a way out of no way, Father. We thank you for being with us. Uh, up and down the dangerous highway day and night, Father. We thank you for all that you have done, you is doing, and you shall do in each of our lives. We give you the honor, glory, and praise, Father. We thank you, Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you that our eyes is open that we see and our ears open that we hear. And we gain wisdom, knowledge, and understanding from on high as we study and meditate on your word, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, <clears throat> uh, let's draw near to God, Hebrews 10, 19 to 25. Amen. <clears throat> And the scripture lesson text read, Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, but not not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as in the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as you see the day approaching. Amen. Great and wonderful lesson that we are going into. The full assurance of faith. The full assurance of faith by drawing nigh to God. Amen. Verses 19 and 20 says, Therefore, brethren, having boldness, enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh. As we see, the exhortion assumes that all believers are now priests because we are told to have boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. The common people during the Jewish economy were barred from the holy place and the most holy place. Only the priests could enter the first room and only the high priest could enter the second. Now that it is all changed, God has no no special place where only a special ca cast of men may approach him. Instead, all believers may come into his presence by faith at any time and from any place on earth. Uh, our approach is by a new and living way. New here may have the meaning of newly slain a newly made. Living seems to be a reference to Jesus in resurrection. Therefore, to a living Savior, this way was open through the veil that is his flesh. This clearly teaches that the veil between the two 
compartments of the tabernacle was a type of the body of our Lord in order for us to have access into God's presence. The veil had to be rent. That is, his body had to be broken in death. This reminds us that we cannot draw nigh to Christ's sinless life, but only by his vericus death, only through the mortal wounds of the lamb can we go in. Every time we enter God's presence in prayer or worship, let us remember that the privilege was bought for us at tremendous cost. Verse 21 and 22 says, And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our heart sprinkled from an evil conscience and other, uh, and our bodies washed with pure water. We not only have great confidence when we enter the presence of God, we also have a great high priest over the house of God, even though we are priests, 1 Peter 2 and 9 and Revelations 1 and 6, yet we still need a priest ourselves. Christ is our great high priest, and his present ministry for us assures our continued welcome before God. Let us draw near. This is the believer's blood brought privilege. How wonderful beyond all words that we are invited to have audience, not with the world's celebrities, but with the sovereign of the universe. The extent to which we value the invitation is shown by the manner in which we respond to it. Verses 23 to 25 says, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, forsaking the assembly, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as you see the day approaching. The time is coming that the end is nigh. The second exhortation is to hold fast the confession of our hope. Nothing must be allowed to turn us from the uh, starch confession that our only hope is in Christ. For those who were tempted to give up the future unseen blessings of Christianity for the present visible things of Judaism, there is the reminder that he who promised is faithful. His promises can never fail. No one who trusts him, trusts in him, will ever be disappointed. The Savior will come as he has promised, and his people will be with him and like him forever. We should also be discovering ways of encouraging fellow believers to manifest love and to encourage good works. In the New Testament sense, love is not an emotion, but an act of the will. We are commanded to love. Therefore, it is something we can and must do. Love is the root. Good works are the fruit. By our example and by our teaching, we should stir up other believers to this kind of life. Then we should continue to meet together and not des desert the local fellowship as some do. This may be considered as general exhortation for all believers to be faithful, their church attendance without question the we find strength comfort nourishment and joy in collective worship and service
And even though, you know, I'm going to stop right there for a second. As we look at our surroundings, our situation, we are to be mindful of our distancing with uh, uh, with others. But we still can uh, assemble together at the house of the Lord uh, in distancing uh, uh, when doors of the church is open. Amen. And still work towards uh, making sure that you have connection with a uh, the body of Christ in whatever uh, manner they are uh, assembling together. Even if it's Zoom, if it's Facebook, whatever it may be, assemble with the brothers and sisters of Christ that it may strengthen us and, and help us to uh, stay praying in prayer and, 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 and reading and meditating on the word. It's a, it may <clears throat> also be looked on as a special encouragement for Christians going through times of persecution, there is always a temptation to isolate oneself in order to avoid arrest, a reproach, and suffering, and thus to be a secret disciple. You know, there are those that are at variance with becoming arrested for serving the Lord. There are those that are, are dealing with reproach. They are dealing with suffering where they are physically being hurt for serving the Lord. Let us pray and lift them up. But basically it says the verse is a warning against apostasy being lacked. Uh, hiding out for the, yourself to where you cannot be a blessing to yourself or to others because Satan will uh, step in and cause more damage to you by doing so. To forsake the local assembly here means to turn one's back on Christianity and revert to Judaism. Some were doing this when this letter was written. There was need to exhort one another, especially in view of the nearness of Christ's return. When he comes, the be persecuted, ostracized, despised believers will be seen to be on the winning side. Until then, there is need for steadfastness. Staying, staying anyhow. Amen, amen. This is a great and wonderful lesson. I pray you meditate on this lesson and have a wonderful and blessed day. God bless you.